Hi, welcome to Talk About here on Shaw TV North Island. My name is still John Twig. Got a good guest today, Councillor Larry Sampson. Larry, thanks for coming in. Thank you, John, for having me. Yeah. Well, it's budget time, past tense as we're recording this. Council just finished their budget. It was a very uh, mature process, I think very complex. And I asked Larry to come on because Mayor Andy Adams has been on the show about 19 times. Well, I exaggerate. And this is your first time. It is so, my first time. Yeah. And I was mistaken. I thought he was chair of the finance committee, but it, actually there is no fight. But you've been on a, an informal finance committee, I think. Yeah. I mean, uh, Mayor Adams, when he assigned the portfolios, uh, that was one of the things that he had uh, a couple of us sit on the finance committee, just to oversee the budget process yeah. and how it's going to proceed. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It, was, uh, it, it was an exciting time. Yeah. Now, you've been on council. This is your second term. This is my second term. So you've seen, this will be your fourth, fifth, fourth budget, I guess. Yes. Fourth. Yeah. yeah, this will be the fourth budget. The first was the three-year term, and now yeah. we're in, now this is a four-year yeah. term, yeah. first time yeah. in the province. So, uh, Well, uh, I, I'm interested about the process of making the budget under the, the new council, as I call it, versus the old council. What's it like from your perspective? I, this one was, it's very, um, very exciting time in the sense that we've got a, a very good staff um, mm -hmm. and they worked very hard on, on the process. And throughout the process, throughout the year, there were different times when council got together and we discussed the process and how it was going to proceed. And it could be anywhere f talking about the reserve policies and the different, different reserves, but also talking about the three components of that make up the budget, okay. and three components being the base budget, the capital projects, and the service level changes that either council or staff are, yeah. are requesting to go forward. Yeah. So those were the three different sections, and so yeah. uh, staff broke it down. Um, they were well prepared and made sure that council was well prepared, so it was, it was really good yeah. to see. Now, um, I cover council, uh, I, I tend to to go to council, I watch it on the TV. It's a wonderful thing to be able to do that. Uh, but you guys are always hitting something called the contingency fund. <laughs> now, I'm old enough to know what that means, but tell me about the contingency well, fund. Council has uh, a contingency fund that we budget um, every year. It comes out of the gaming reserves. Okay. So from Chances Casino, um, council, the city received 10% of, of the profits. And what we use it for is different items that come up through the year that we didn't uh, plan for, that were unforeseen, that things change in the city as we proceed through the year. So it does give chancel, council a chance to use that fund without having to go back through um, a budget amendment, yeah. which, would okay. which would encompass uh, numerous meetings as well as um, a bylaw change. Yeah. So it gives us that, that flexibility. Yeah. Now, w at the last council meeting, uh, w uh, I saw that used. There was a, uh, was it the homeless shelter or something needed a bit of extra money or there was some project like that. And, you know, they were thinking, okay, well, we'll, we'll put this over. And then somebody had the right, uh, bright idea of, why don't we take it out of contingency? Last year's contingency. Yeah, we, we uh, we're carrying over about, um, I think it was about $65,000 of the 2015 contingency. Yeah. And so when Councillor Kerr wanted, brought forward a motion to sponsor one of the nights at the homeless shelter. Oh, that's what it was. And it was uh, $6,000. Yeah. Rather than taking it from a new uh, initiative that Council's undertaking in 2016, Councillor Cornfield said, well, hey, let's take it out of the Council contingency from 2015 um, and then as we go forward with this new uh, initiative, uh, it gives us time to develop the policy yeah. for it. I, I highlight that because it's a really good example of how council is working together. You know, in the previous council, there was a bit of a left right or an old new, but you know, now you've got gender balance. I think there's a kind of a pretty good spectrum of political uh, balances. And uh, you know, I've covered a lot of council and this one in Campbell River is working very unusually well. Well, we've got a we've got a, a great group. We don't always agree, 
and yeah. that's a good thing. Uh, yes. You know, um, <laughs> but we've got uh, Mayor Adams and Councillor Cornfield that come with uh, a wealth of experience and have been on yeah. council. Uh, Councillor Cornfield was mayor at one time, yeah. so they bring a wealth of experience. You got Councillor Kerr and myself. This is both our second terms, yeah. so we got sort of got our feet wet and we're, we're into it. Uh, and you got uh, Councillor Babchuk, Wright, and Evans that are new, but on the other hand, Councillor Babchuk comes from the school board. Yeah. And she brings that wealth of experience over from the school and, board. And Marla so Marlene Wright has a lot of business experience, and Colleen Evans with the chamber, with of the course. Chamber. It, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a dynamic group. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so anyway, yeah. it's good. Um, so tell us about the new budget. So the new budget, um, we, we started, the staff started uh, really ramping it up in September uh, to, to get going on the budget. Um, Council started getting involved while we're involved throughout the year, really started getting involved in October. We started having uh, council meetings. Um, sometimes we call them lunch and learns. Sometimes we call them committee of the holes, but at laying out the budget process, all gearing up for these uh, three to four days in December. What I particularly liked about this budget um, is that the budget is approved by, at this time, so January the 1st, staff have their budget. They're yeah. not waiting until um, April, May to know what the budget is for their departments. Yeah. Um, they have the opportunities on January the 1st to start laying out their work plan for 2016. Yeah. And council was uh, very ambitious this year. Staff was very ambitious, so uh, staff have a full, a full workload for, for 2016. Yeah. And it could be simple things like hiring students. If you wait till you're hiring them in April and May, are the students already yeah, they found, found other, things. other things? Ordering supplies. So by having it ready by January the 1st, uh, I think it's a great advantage to us and yeah. to staff. I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but four years ago, there was a new council which was elected in December. I th or I'm not sure they moved the election dates. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they were into the new year without a budget. Exactly, and, and it makes it very hard for, for staff to, yeah. to go forward, not knowing for certainly what their budgets are going to be. Yeah. So this, this is a much better, and I know we've been looked at by other uh, municipalities and cities, and they're looking at it going like, that's, that's the way that they want to set their yeah. agenda, so uh, it's a yeah. good thing. Yeah, yeah. Now the, uh, the local newspaper, the Campbell River Mirror, Campbell River's best newspaper. Hi, Dave. <laughs> um, council raises taxes again. Uh, well, yeah, but it's not like a double-digit increase, is it? No, the, the overall tax is 2.4%. Is that, that's what uh, council approved. Um, we think it's, it's a very reasonable tax increase. We feel we can, um, to the public, that it is what we're seeing with um, you know the different inflation factors d different uh, uh, employee r requirements that were made such as wage negotiations and wage increases yeah. even things like the Canadian dollar being down 30 percent where we have to purchase our stuff uh, yeah. like a fire truck I'm from the United say, States but you pre that's yeah. paid for isn't that's it? that's paid yeah. but um, it's ongoing okay um, you know and whether or we're purchasing steel for different uh, projects that we have right. so the 2.4 percent um, is just keeping us we did increase some of the services um, but we kept it within reason and we yeah. think the 2.4 percent is a very yeah. a good budget now there's the base budget that went up 1.3 percent what's the base budget way that uh, staff brought it to us and the way that we agreed to go forward was the base budget is that we are going to do everything that we did last year so that is the base. So we no start cuts. at no cuts. We start at the base. If council wishes to cut it, they can. Yeah. Um, but that is the base. It is the base with an inf an inflation factor. It also takes into account um, contractual agreements such as wage increases, but it does maintain the status quo. Yeah. So to speak, as we did yeah. last year. If the departments want to uh, increase the level of service or add a new level of service then that must come either under capital projects or it comes under service level change requests. Yeah. So the base is everything we did last year, we're going to do again, unless council uh, decided otherwise. 
and then anything over and above had to be a service level change request. Okay. Now, the city kindly did a media briefing that I was the only one at, so I got a whole hour with the mayor plus a whole bunch of staffers. And I asked them about, well, okay, if it's going up 2.5%, uh, but the revenues are only going up 1.3, how are you paying for it? And the answer was that, well, out of growth. Uh, I'm not sure if that's exactly correct, but you can correct it if I'm wrong. But the, I gather there's anticipation of increased building permits, increased development cost charges. Um, what we see is uh, we saw about uh, 300, and I think it was 325, $350,000 increase in revenue. Um, 170 of it was, I believe, was around um, increased revenue from uh, real estate, from um, housing and businesses and different things. There was um, another was from utilities. So I, I think it was about two years ago where we started to increase um, the utilities uh, portion of the budget. So we saw some money revenue from that and we also increased managed forest lands uh, which oh, is that's the that timber web. Tax. Yeah, the contentious tax that we yeah. had brought up. So between those three items brought in about an extra 300, I think it was $350,000 yeah, yeah. in that. Well, I'm used to provincial budgets and, you know, like billions of dollars. And to hear like, well, we've added 300 and some odd thousand dollars. You know, it's a big sum in the city context, but in the real world, it's not. Yeah, so and, and unlike the, the provincial or federal, we, we can't run a deficit. Yeah. We have to balance. At the end of the year, the books must balance yeah. and the budgets must balance. So yeah. uh, staff is very, uh, when they do their budgeting, is very conservative yeah. in that. Uh, but th yeah. 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 So uh, w from your perspective, what are some of the highlights in the budget? You know, items that you're really glad went through or people need to know more about? Um, some of the things, I'm, I mean, I'm, we're maintaining our infrastructure, yeah. you know. For a while there, um, when we went from that transition from, I'll say, an industrial town, when we had the catalyst pulp and paper and they were yeah. paying, uh, you know, $5 million in taxes to the city, yeah. um, you know, and then we had to start cutting back. Yeah. Um, you know, we couldn't pave our roads. Yeah. You know, we were patching our roads. Yeah. Um, we couldn't, um, some of our drainage ditching was taken back. We couldn't sometimes maintain the parks to the standards we we wanted yeah. and what the and what the people wanted um, so there was a number of, of different things that were starting to to suffer yeah. um, downtown revitalization um, yeah. you know we couldn't spend the money in the downtown to make it yeah. um, or a place where people want to go so what I'm pleased about is we've we're going through that now and now we're starting to see the benefits we're starting to see uh, the Berwick's the comfort in. We're starting to see healthy way foods. Uh, yeah. You were at council meeting the other night where they want to uh, open up a craft pub. A craft, craft pub, pub. Yeah. downstairs. Yeah. Uh, Steve Marshall <laughs> is moving his Ford dealership. So we're starting to see the, as we're coming out of the, that period of time, um, and now with that, council's able to start looking at some of the things that we want to do to increase um, some of the, the amenities that people want to see. Yeah. Uh, Seagull Walkway uh, that goes from the government wharf to the Robert Oster Park. Well, it's in need of a substantial upgrade because it's washing away underneath it. Huh. So there's $400,000 for that. Uh, we saw the Rob Ron artificial turf installed. Yeah. People have said that they want a better boat ramp. You know, yeah, so the, the Big Rock boat ramp is one of the big ticket items in the it, budget. It was, and when we did the park survey, that was about two or three years ago, it was uh, the number two item that, yeah. um, for being the salmon fishing capital of the world. Yeah, um, try putting your boat in the water. Try putting your boat in the water, you know. Um, so yeah, so, you know, council is addressing that and going through with the uh, the Big Rock boat, boat ramp. Yeah. So we're excited about that. Yeah. Um, impact on property taxes. Let's, uh, everybody, well not everybody, but a lot of people watching are saying, what's it gonna do to my taxes? Well, the, we, staff tries to say, okay, what's it going to mean to the average house? Okay. So, so they look at, and they can't really say for certain what the average house price is because the tax assessments don't come out until January. 
don't worry, folks. It's not an earthquake. It's just somebody in the back room. <laughs> yeah. So, so they, so they do have a forecast, and they, and they believe the average house in Calgary River is about two hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Yeah. So, based on that, staff is saying, well, you're going to see approximately a three dollar a month tax increase, or thirty-seven dollars a year yeah. tax increase. Yeah. Um, if you own, say, a four hundred thousand dollar house, and again, this is based until we get the tax assessment you might see, um, I think it's about $60 or say $5 a month tax increase. And that's yeah. until we get the tax assessments in January, this is just um, yeah. uh, a yeah. forecast. So yeah, well, not too much to, uh, to really No, you know, I mean, $3 is, you know, it, it's, it's, you know it, it's money. So, I mean, it does make a difference, but again, we think with the increased level of services, and maintaining the level of services, and I, and I look at things like yard waste pickup. I mean, that was a, a great thing that we brought back last year yeah. that people have continued to comment on. Like, thank you so much for and, bringing that and back. And me too, thank you very there much. You go. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, uh, the Taiyi Plaza issue, uh, it, it's private land, but I guess they've got covenants with the city or something, I don't know, but, uh, what, is that affected by the budget, or is there anything th that's going to come along as? No, the, as you indicated, it, it's private land. It's, yeah. it's owned by a, a company out of Vancouver, yeah. uh, a family company, Molnar. Molnar Group, and uh, they do development all over Vancouver Island and the Lower Mainland, so they're yeah. well respected. Yeah. Uh, he has had some talk with the downtown BIA. Um, I have attended a couple of those meetings, and they do have plans. They want to. I'll say revitalize the plaza because yeah. uh, there is some vacancies in there. So I, I think you're starting to now to see some changes yeah. um, by attending the BIA. My the next big change I think you'll see is I call it the old super value site. I was just going to see I, I, as we're recording just a few days ago, some fencing went up around it. Yeah, they uh, they'll be demolishing that building. Ah, and there's a, a building in the back there. I think it was called the it used to be the Royal Bank way back. Huh. And that will be coming yes. down as well. Oh my! And uh, and so council's excited, uh, and that we're uh, looks like we're going to see some downtown residential, and it's something that we've always been pushing, been trying to provide incentives, and been working with the developers to get this. So yeah. we're very excited about it. Yeah. Now the 9.5 acre site, which is three plus 6.5, I think, and some of it is First Nations. Big chunk, I think, or is it the First Nations got the three or the six? First Nations have the six. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think Mayor Adams made a promise that he's going to deal with that this year, coming up, I guess. Yeah, I think that was in his, uh, the night of the election, when, yeah. when his uh, thank you speech, that was one of the things that yeah. uh, he talked about, th yeah. the three and a half acre site, but he also talked about the forestry task force. Yes. And that was another one of his yes. um, yeah. things that he's very keen about, very excited about. So um, they've uh, started the process on the three and a half acre sites. They're going to take uh, form a, a task force. Okay. Uh, it's Mayor Adams and Councilor Wright. And they're going to um, bring on members to sit on this task force. They're also going to look at all the, pa I'll call them past reports, uh, past um, dealings that with that site yeah and they're going to go forward and he has given it a a year it's a it's an ambitious plan but he wants to have something coming before council um either late this year or early next year on this is this is what we should be doing with this site yeah. and proceed with it yeah um the maritime heritage center i think is affected by a budget thing but i'm not sh have i got that wrong um, the Maritime Heritage Center, we've, we've done th some um, improvements, okay. um, uh, mainly to the property. Um, we're improving... Oh yeah, on the south side. On the south side. Yeah, there used to be a, a house way back that the city purchased and uh, we tore the house down. Um, but now we're going to fix, fix it up. Uh, we're going to do some maintenance, do some cleanups. Because as you're walking down, whether it be to the Pier Street Market, yeah. Um, it, it doesn't give the impression that we want to see for Campbell River that people are walking down. Yeah, there's a nice dirt trail there that's easy. It's a nice dirt trail. There's a <laughs> fence that's kind of leaning over. So lawyers love it. Yeah, we're saying uh, let's let's fix this up a little bit. Yeah. 
Um, there's also still some uh, infrastructure from the days when it was a sewage lift plant, yes. a sewage facility. So we're going to yeah. do some uh, creative ways of uh, with the yeah, okay. infrastructure that was yeah. there. Okay. And then doing little things like um, improving the Wi-Fi, yeah. um, which is important to people that uh, Nowadays. are doing um, want to yeah. rent it as a conference yeah. Yeah. location. Um, economic development, that's a big issue. River Corp has been shut down and uh, I gather the budget is creating a new in-house position? Yeah, that ra is going through a, a transition right now. Yeah. Um, and part of the economic development is the tourism yes. component. Um, we're, we're finally able to convince the hotels to sign on to the hotel tax. Uh, we're one of the few communities that, that do not have a hotel tax. Yeah. Um, did, did I hear you say it's it's going through now? Yes, the, we've got the majority of the hotel uh, owners oh. um, have agreed that it's a good thing. What miracle got that through? Uh, it was uh, <laughs> persistence with, uh, with, with Mayor Adams. He, oh, okay. he took another thing. So, um, and, uh, so it's exciting. So that's yeah. going to go through. So economic development is going through a, a significant change we're still sorting it out. Um, we're still going through that transition. Yeah. And I just ask people to stay tuned. Yeah. Come uh, 2016, you'll see these changes yeah. as, as they yeah. happen. Uh, Sybil Andrews uh, got some big changes too. The cottage down in Willow Point. Uh, we'll get brief us on that? Well, Sybil Andrews, uh, a couple things. One is we've extended the lease with the Campbell River Arts Council. Yep. So Ken Blackburn and uh, the association. So that's that's a good thing. Um, five, it, five years for a dollar. Um, says in the paper. Yeah, if you look at the registry, if you go in there, there's people from all over the world um, come into that yeah. that facility and, and see it. Yeah. But we're also starting to recognize um, the Walter Morgan Studio. Okay. Now Walter was uh, Sybil's husband, and mm -hmm. he was a boat builder oh. from the World War II and, and days and. He had a machine shop as well as a, a wood shop in his yeah. in that shed, and uh, some of the things that he turned out were were amazing. Yeah, uh, and the Willow Point Lions Club Hall is being refurbished. I gather I haven't been in yet. The Willow Point Lions Club they got a, a, a grant and they did a absolutely unbelievable change in the kitchen. It looks absolutely fabulous. Awesome. Um, upgraded the kitchen with stainless yeah. steel, new cabinets. Um, so they did, it was, again, the Willow Point Lions Club, but also the businesses in Calum River that supported them and right. helped them and uh, yeah. all pitched in together. Yeah. And, uh, and Frank James Park, the adjacent area where they do the shoreline arts, the, the log carving thing, it was great, pro but it, it seemed a little cramped. But uh, there's, I saw in the budget there's some plans af afoot there. Well, we are looking at the Frank James Park because the city owns a property. That it curves right in behind the Willow Point Lions Club. Yes. So we're kind of looking at an overall plan. Okay, what are, what are we going to see for for that area? Um, respecting the Shoreline Arts because it's yeah. it's uh, an icon in Willow Point. Yeah. And it's going to we're going to see it. I there, just had so. a brainwave. You could pave out onto the beach and make a nice parking lot there. No. No, no not, not going to happen. Point Reef is I, and I've walked there with my grandchildren onto the when the tide's out, yeah. and it's uh, it's pretty nice. It's pretty cool when you can yeah. pick up the crabs and walk amongst the seaweed and yeah, and so accessible. It was a joke, folks. It was a joke. <laughs> um, is there something that we didn't touch because we're down to about three minutes? That uh, you're, so I didn't ask or something um, you want to reiterate. Time went by fast. Yeah, um, I know. <laughs> we are doing some things in the downtown. We, we do um, downtown crime. Downtown crime. Um, you know, we we do have some concerns, but this council is being very proactive. Uh, we're working with all the emergency groups, the RCMP, the fire department, uh, safety net security. I think it's safety net security, one of the security firms. Yeah. Um, so we are working with them to address some of the issues that we are seeing in the downtown because. Yeah. This council, and, and to a certain extent, past council has put a priority on downtown revitalization. Yeah, and that's do the, that, the tax holiday thing has worked, hasn't it? It has worked. Uh, you know, we waited for it, but yeah. uh, it's with yeah. the Seymour Pacific and Broad Street properties, and we're continuing to see that now. Again, yeah, as we come, 
the Comfort Inn. Comfort Inn, Berwick. And uh, Healthy Way. Healthy Way, uh, Shauna Sloan and, and Buddy's Dance Studio. Yeah. They took advantage of it. Yeah. Um, and now we're seeing, as we mentioned earlier, the a new pub. Yeah. Maybe. If it, that's going through public <laughs> well, hearing, well, so be, be first we'll tomorrow. see what yeah. the public hearing says. Yeah. And uh, yeah. where it goes from that. Uh, one thing related to that, the RCMP is getting an extra staff person or, or they're rearranging their budget so that police are more free to be policemen some of the and change, women. Yeah, and some of the changes that happen is result of Supreme Court decisions, there must be a much higher level of disclosure of evidence to uh, the defense attorneys. Okay. So what that's done is it's kept the RCMP officers in the office, yeah. um, making sure that all the paperwork. proper disclosure, paperwork, and what this will do is it'll get those RCMP uh, personnel out yeah. onto the streets, and, that, yeah. and that's where we want them. Yeah, right on. And that, well. Um, well, my guest has been Larry Sampson, and I appreciate him coming in. And you know, we've just nicked the top of it. We didn't talk about food security, carbon, perf job creation, the cruise ship terminal, uh, looking ahead, I didn't ask him what's your plans for the next 10 years, so we'll have to have you back. Yeah, and, and <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Um, Counter, it's, we're going through some really exciting times, yeah. and uh, 2016 is looking yeah. better than ever, so. Uh, yeah. You know, people are neat. moving here because of the, uh, Andrew Nikiforica, a guest we had on here recently, and other people, they're choosing to live here. They could live in Victoria or anywhere. And, and like one of the things we hadn't talked about was tourism. You yeah. know, there's latest tourism results show that 73% of the people that come back is are coming back to Campbell River. Yeah. You know, because yeah. they think what a jewel they found. Yeah. And that's so it, yeah. it's, it's okay. a great well, place to be. Thank you for your part in making it that way. And thank you for watching Talk About here on Shaw TV. If you'd like to watch this scintillating interview again, Shaw has a YouTube channel, Shaw TV North Island. Google it, you'll find us. And thanks for watching. Thank you, Valerie, Laura. Chaz and Marjorie, and thank you again for watching.